Hello and welcome to this video. So I like on this channel to try to get people to try new techniques and not get stuck into the same method of doing the same thing over and over again. I want people to try new lighting techniques, new material techniques, and I was browsing YouTube the other day and I found this person that made this, sorry, I found this maniac who created this camera inside of Blender which uses real lenses and a crazy amount of math to create this virtual camera inside of Blender. Formula. Calculate the shape of the lens you need and then model it from highly subdivided hydrospheres. Go insane trying to figure out why the light isn't refracting through it properly and realize that filtered lossy was set to one by default which will automatically blur caused it. And I just, I, my mind was blown and I just had to make some renders using this camera. And because we have a lot of ArcViz tutorials on our channel, I thought I'll take a couple of these tutorial final renders and render them with this camera and see what effect comes out. So I just thought I'd show you the process and then the final renders in the end. Uh, but please note, this is not something that you probably want to add to your workflow because the renders take three to six hours. It's about 28,000 samples and it's still noisy, but the final effect looks like an actual film camera and it is crazy. So let me just jump straight into the video and you can see for yourself. Okay, so this is the scene which I created for one of the tutorials and I thought I'll just add this camera to it. And this is the actual camera. This is the virtual camera. And as you can see, it's got lots of things inside it, including all these lenses and they work I just can't understand how how you do something like this inside a blender, but they managed it and it has everything from a focus ring. So you can adjust the focus. You can see the empty, which shows you where the focus point is. You can adjust the exposure and you can also adjust the aperture. So it's pretty bonkers. Um, so it has a viewfinder. So if you go into here, you can do a viewfinder view, um, but it's going to be very rough and it's not going to be the actual final render uh, quality but it's a very quick way to preview the scene and to see what it's gonna look like. So there is another camera and that one is at the back. Now, as these are real optics, the camera view would be upside down and I wanted to always preview it inside of here. So I flipped the camera upside down and then stopped the compositor from flipping it back, which was the correction that, that this guy made. Um, so I've just flipped it upside down. So now if I go into this camera, um, as you can see, I can't see anything because it's actually gonna be catching the light going through the camera. So until you press render, you can't see what's actually happening. So if I go into render preview now, we'll be able to see what's actually happening. So I'm probably completely messing up all the terms and the correct technical language for this. So please bear with me. I just think it looks cool. I'm just trying to figure this out myself. But as you can see here, a image is gonna be start previewing and this is actually backwards as well because the camera I've turned is upside down, which means that the final step in the compositor will need to be to flip it around the other way. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna move it somewhere else so we can actually see the full scene. I think I had it somewhere like here. And then I'm gonna move the focus ring and try to move that focus point uh, maybe further away, something like here. So it's over the table. Now if I go into the camera again, again I can't see anything, so let's preview this. It's gonna be um, pretty slow, but hopefully in a, you'll be able to start to see the image appear. So, but you can start seeing an image appearing, um, but it's not very useful because it's going to be so slow. So I'm just going to turn this off for now and just talk to you about the render settings. And then I will show you the, some finished products. So what I have here under render settings, samples I have here at 12,000. And I found that that was like about three hours or so. Um, but if you really want it to be a lot cleaner, you bump that up to like 28,000. So that is a crazy amount of samples. There's no noise threshold or anything. You don't want any other calculations. This is just pure light going through the camera with no other calculations. One thing I have turned on is indirect clamping because there was some fireflies. And I think that does take away from the raw nature of this project but it did mean that I can bump the samples down quite a bit and try to get an, a bit more of a usable image quicker than having to wait six to 10 hours for render time. That's kind of it. I mean, there's nothing else here that's too crazy. Um, it's just a crazy camera. I mean, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna show you the finished render for this image and we can have a chat about it. Okay, so this is the finished render from that camera. And there's some things to note. So there is natural distortion around the lens. Now, every lens does have some distortion around the edges, but it's not usually super obvious. But this 
Uh, this effect, I think, is so nice and it's such a unique look that I, I'm happy with it. And as you'll notice, all the lighting has glare. Now, I don't have any glare nodes enabled. This is just pure light going through the lens. I believe it's the imperfections on the lens itself which is causing the glare. Maybe I'm wrong, but I think that's correct. And as you can see here, it's all just smudged loveliness. It's just such a nice shot. I have it. I brought I brought that into Photoshop, and there was um, some color noise which I reduced, and that reduced a lot of the noise, um, which I guess a normal photographer would do with their normal camera. But there is some natural grain going on here, which makes it look like it's just a film grain. It just looks so nice. And um, I did do some post processing on this, like some color corrections, which I did in the actual tutorial for this I just copied the same settings so all of that together makes for such a wonderful image that I never thought I'd see inside of Blender. I also rendered another shot so this is another shot which is using a lot of the depth of field and it just feels so nice. As you can see here there is some glare and that just looks incredibly natural. It all just feels so like like familiar it feels so normal and it's quite a strong depth of field here uh, but like this corner just I could just look at this stuff all day. This is so fantastic. Um, I think this one actually took a little bit longer to render for some reason. Uh, maybe four hours or so. You know, standard. Right, and then I rendered the other scene. So this is from our masterclass tutorial, which was the last big tutorial we did. And you can create an image like this. Well, a uh, little bit cleaner, not like uh, this final noisy image. So do check that out on our channel. But this is another this is another incredible effect here. So you can see there's some distortion and it's creating such a lovely glare on the plant. It all just it feels like I would love to watch a movie film like this. It'll feel like you're kind of dreaming. Um, I just love this shot. In general, this is one of my favorite shots I've done for a long time anyway from the standard render. And this just kind of elevates it to a whole different level which I never thought possible. So that's fantastic. And then this is the final shot which I did and it, it feels like a dream. It feels so inviting. Such an interesting shot. I don't know what it is, maybe it's the dress that's out of focus or this glare that's hitting here, but it feels like something I've never seen before in a 3D render and I think it's fantastic. I don't really know what else to say really because I just think it's amazing. I hope that you all will be excited for this as much as I am. So check out this person's YouTube video. I'll put a link in the description and just try out this camera for yourself. I believe, I, I can't remember if there's a free version, or if there's a paid version, but it was like $4 or $5. I recommend just doing it. And I think that it might give you something to try new, might give you some new ideas uh, for different types of lighting and stuff that you want to try out because there's such a natural glare that maybe you'll be, maybe it gives you some funky ideas. I don't know. Anyway, thank you for watching. I think that's all I wanted to say. There's, there's a fantastic person that created a fantastic product, which creates some fantastic renders. So yeah, thank you for watching and I will see you guys soon.